fine. I'm not going to upload that one. We'll upload this one that deals with their assessment. So at the moment, I hope you see my screen, which has the, the questions that we're going to be doing today. So we're right. doing study unit 7 till 11, but we're not going to finish all of them. We'll carry on tomorrow again. Um, so I'm going to take this one as a revision as well. So since you haven't done it, um, I will give you the formulas. You work it through. We go it through it the same way as we did with assignment with the self-assessment number one where I show you and then we work it out together so that there's no quietness. We don't have people being quiet for long. So we talk through it. <clears throat> OK, so everybody should be unmute so, and have your calculators ready because we're going to work it out together. The whole exam paper. OK, the first question. The mean annual cost of an automobile insurance is 95 rand. Assume that the population standard deviation is 14 rand. What is the probability that a simple random sample of 30 for the automob uh, automobile insurance policy will have a sample mean less than 90? So remember, study unit seven is sampling distribution. Get my pants. So this is a sampling distribution question. And since we are asked to calculate the probability, so remember, we find the probability by using the Z score, which is the sample mean minus the population mean as population sample mean divide by the standard error, which is your population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Remember that. So what are we given? We are told what the mean is, which this is our population sample mean. And we are also told what the population standard deviation is. And we are given the sample size, which is our n. And we are told that the sample mean is less than 90, which this then means is sample mean is less than 90. And we always need to remember the following, that for a probability of z less than a value, that probability we're going to find on the table. Remember that? Probability of Z greater than a value, that probability we find by one minus the value we find on the table. And the last one is the probability of between where Z lies between A and B. We find that by the probability of Z less than B minus the probability of Z minus A. So now, since this is the less than, we're going to find this probability of z less than a value. So it means when we go to the table, and I have my tables here, so we'll use our table. When we go there, we're going to find our probability. So substituting the values, z less than our mean, it's always Nine. In the it's 90, yes, minus our population mean. 95. 95, divide by the standard, standard deviation. Of 14. Which is 14, divide by the square root of. Uh, the, the sample size, which is 30. Yes, so now calculate. The, the the value
I think minus one nine one nine six. It's minus one five one six. Nine six. We need to keep it to two decimal because when we go to the Z table, we're only using two decimals. So now we go to the minus side. We are looking for Z less than minus 1.96. Point nine, you go find it there, and at the top, is that one there? And the probability is zero point zero two five zero. which is that answer. Agree? Yes, on my side. Yeah. Yes, for me too. Yes. Okay, moving on yes. to number two, which is there also the proportions, uh, it's also sampling distribution. It says the proportion of eligible voters in the next election who, who will vote for the ANC is assumed to be 0 0.55 in Gauteng. What is the probability that in a random sample of 500 less than 0 0.49 says that they will vote for the ANC? And also, since this is also a Z uh, sampling distribution for the proportions, so we're going to use Z is equals to our P minus our population proportion divided by the standard error, which is your population proportion. times one minus the population proportion divided by n. Go to what we are given. We are given our population proportion as 0 0.05. We are given our n as 500. And we are told that it's less than. So therefore, the sign here changes to a less than. And this is 0 0.049, which is our sample proportion. Remember, if they don't give you the sample proportion, they will give you your P, they will give you your X, and you can calculate your sample proportion. But in this instance, they gave us the sample proportion. So we need to calculate the probability of this proportion. Our P is 0 0.49 minus our population proportion, which is 0 0.55, divide by the standard error which is 0 0.55 times 1 minus 0 0.55 divided by our n, which is 500. Do the calculation and let me know what is our z value.
And do you have an answer? Um, minus 269, 2.69, but I just need to check. It has to be a, a negative answer. But I'm not sure. Mine is minus 2.69, so I'm not sure if it's right. I'll, I'll just do it now quickly again. Okay, minus 2.69. Six. Yeah. Okay, we'll wait for the others to say what is the answer. I can also check. Maybe. Um, I have minus 2.7027. Well, yeah. Do you round it off to two decimal points? Yes. Okay. So minus 2.70. Yes, I think that is the answer. Let me quickly also calculate it and I see. I think which it. gave me option uh, A. Okay. Divide by the square root of 0.55 times 1 minus 0.55 divided by 500 minus 2.70. And that's what I found as well. Yeah, that's also then, what I have. Yes, then we go to the table. We look for minus. Minus 2.7. And zero at the top. Therefore, that is our probability. 0 0.0035. Which is option number one. A. Which is A, yes. Okay. Then we move to the next question. It asks The average cost per night of a hotel in Port Elizabeth Township is two. 173, assume the estimate is based on a sample of 45 hotels and that the sample standard deviation is 65. For a 95 confidence interval and ha. Then it means we are now in confidence interval, which is study unit eight. We're no longer in the sampling distribution. So with the confidence interval, there are certain things that we need to always remember. Remember that we can calculate confidence interval for the mean when the population standard deviation is known, means they would have given us the sigma or the population standard deviation. Or we can calculate it for the mean when the population standard deviation is unknown, it means they would have given you their sample standard deviation and also for the proportion. So if we go through this question, we can see that they give us the average cost, which is the mean. They also give the sample size, which is our N. They give the sample standard deviation. Even if they didn't have said sample standard deviation there, you need to be very careful when you read the questions because sometimes they don't put it, sometimes they do put it. So for example, with this, when they didn't give you the sample, uh, the sample standard deviation, the fact that this is based on a sample of 45 hotel that has a standard deviation of this much, then it means they would have, you can assume that this, standard deviation comes from this sample because they are all in one line and it says the sample of this and the standard deviation of that. But I guess in order for them not to confuse you, they will always give you 
the one way that will tell you whether population standard deviation is known or unknown. And in this instance, they gave you the sample standard deviation. Therefore, the population standard deviation is unknown. And we use the point estimate plus or minus the critical value because this is where the population standard deviation is unknown. We use the T table and we do T, uh, T alpha divided by two and the degrees of freedom. And remember the degrees of freedom is N minus one times the standard error, which is the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of N. Bracket if we want. But the question is asking for the critical value, sorry. So it means we're not going to do all this since the question is only asking for the critical value, not the confidence interval per se. So the question says, what is the critical value? And that is the only thing we need to be calculating. Our alpha, we're going to get it from a 95% confidence interval. Remember, this is the same as one minus alpha is equals to 0 0.95, which alpha will be equals to 0 0.05 if we make alpha the subject of the formula. By moving alpha onto the other side, we take 0 0.05 minus or 1 minus 0 0.95 will give us alpha of 0 0.05. Then we can find our critical value by saying T 0 0.05 divided by 2. And our N is 45 minus 1. Therefore, this will give the critical value of 0 0.0250 and 34. How do we find this? We go to the T table. Critical values of T. And we go find. Remember, we don't use the cumulative probabilities at the top. We look at the values closer to the table, which is 0, 0.025. Remember, we're looking for 0, 0.0250 and 44, which is our degrees of freedom. So I'm going to go up because I'm going to lose that column at the top. That's why I create the line. We need to go to 44. And that is 44. And the answer will be that. Two comma zero one. And let's look two comma zero one five four, which is option number B. Are we good? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay. Then the next question is asking you, oh, this is a repeat. It's the same thing. It was asking the critical value as well. Yeah. I think it's the exact same question. Yeah, I think it was a mistake there. Okay, so the next question. A survey of a random sample of grocery shoppers in Kimberley found that the mean of the grocery purchase was 78. Assume that the population standard deviation of the grocery purchase value is 21. The 95% confidence interval for the mean grocery is, they want you to calculate or find the confidence interval. So remember this, I'm going to give you the formula. 
based on the information that we read. So it says the population standard deviation. So this one, the population standard deviation is known. And when it's known, we use the Z critical value. This will be your population standard deviation. Oh, I don't know how to write them. Divide by the square root of n. Remember to find the critical value, which will be 0, 0,05 divided by 2, which is the z of 0, 0,0250. To find this critical value, we go to the z table. We look inside the table on the negative side of the table, not the positive, but the negative side. Inside the table, we look for 0, 0,0250 inside the table. 0, comma, which is that and go get the critical value, which are your Z values. And those are your critical values, 1,96. In a nutshell, what I'm trying to show you is also always remember they might in the exam they like asking for 95% confidence interval. So you by now you should know that that is 1,96. If your critical value is alpha divided by two, then it's always going to be 1,96. So please solve the formula. Remember when you're doing this, the minus first and then the addition second, because we're doing upper and lower critical values. Given N, we given mean, we given the standard deviation. Substitute into the formula. I'll give you five minutes to substitute. And then you can tell me how you substituted the values. And then we move on into the calculation. I'm getting to option A. Okay, let's substitute the values. The mean? Okay, the mean is 78. Plus minus your Z of 1.96. The standard deviation is 21. Divided by the square root of 300. Okay. Then I went and said 78 plus minus 1.96 and I solved the value in brackets, mm -hmm. which my answer was 1.212436.
you read them too quickly. I hope I, I captured them right. There is. Sorry, 1.212436. 1.212436. Yeah, not 34. Okay. Okay. And then I again did the 78 plus minus and I solved the 1.96 times 1.21. So, sorry, I'm just making sure I had it right. Yeah. And then I got to. 2.376374 2. 2.376374 okay, okay. then from, from from there i said 78 plus the 2.3 um 6374 okay. so we need to start first with the minus oh okay 78 minus the 2.376. And then we can go to the plus side. 78 plus 2.376. Okay. And you get um, seventy-eight minus seventy-eight minus two point three seven six was seventy-five point six two. Okay, and on the other side. And on the other side, it is eighty point eight three. Sorry, eighty point three eight. Which makes option number B. You need to be very careful when you do this confidence intervals as well. If you have started with the plus and you put the plus first, the value of the plus, you would have chosen A, which is incorrect. Yes, yes I see that now. Okay. So we always do the minus side because the minus side tells you the lower up, the lower limit and the plus side tells you the upper limit. So you cannot put upper and then lower. Okay, so going on to question six. Question six is still also confidence interval. If I look at the options as well, they just tell you, they shout confidence interval here. Yeah? And they have given you at the 95% confidence interval for the developer confidence interval um, with the level of confidence of 95%, where the population proportion, um, if a sample of a uh, sample size of 200 had a 40 successes. So they, you need to first calculate your P and substitute into the formula plus or minus because it's for the proportion, oh, that's the other thing I need to mention. Because of the proportion, we use Z alpha divided by two times the standard error, which is your sample proportion, one minus sample proportion divided by N and substitute into the formula. So we are given our N and we are given our X.
Are we winning? How are we doing? No, I keep getting syntax error. Uh, remember, uh, if we look at the answer, they only want you to work out everything on the right hand side. Mm. And since you are given a 95% confidence interval, your Z alpha divided by two is 1,96. I told you that mm -hmm. they like yes. using 96%, so mm -hmm. 95%. So you must not by now know that at 95% confidence interval, the uh, confidence level, your critical value is 1.96. So right. uh, let's, let's start with the P. It's 40 over 200. What did you get? What is your P? 0, 0.2. 0.2. 0, 0.2. So 0 0.2 plus or minus 1.96, which is our critical value, times the square root of 0, 0.2. times the square root of 0, 0,2 times 1 minus 0, 0,2 divide by 200. 200. So do what is inside the bracket, uh, the square root, multiply by 1.96. What do you get? 0 0.028. 1.96 multiplied by the square root of the values that you get underneath the square root. I'm just calculating quickly. 1 minus 0.2. Divide by 200. It's 0 0.0. 0. 28. 28. Ah, ah. Ah, ah. 5, 5. 5, 5. Oh, uh, sorry. I was said I first. Yes, and then I multiplied by the 1.96. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. So it was a 0 0.028 and then times the 1.96 is a 0 0.05. Okay, so this is 0 0.028 multiplied yes. by 1.96. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's let's do it that way then. Uh 1.96. times 0 0.028, which then should give, uh, leave it to three decimals, okay, to plus or minus, and when you do that, 0 0.055. Yeah. 
get zero point zero five five to three decimal. And that is option number one. Okay, I think this will be our last one and then the rest will discuss tomorrow. And this is confidence in, uh, sorry, hypothesis testing. Because already I can see you on the question, it asks about hypothesis. So this is hypothesis. And oh, before we move to the hypothesis, if I can go back one up to show you. So for the sampling distribution, we had two questions. Uh, except for the other one, which was an error. And for confidence intervals, we had three questions. So we have one, two, three. Yes, we had three questions for confidence interval. The first one was asking, so this is also part of the confidence intervals. It was asking about the critical value. And then the other one was asking about the sample standard, uh, the, um, sorry, the, uh, the probability, or not the probability, the confidence intervals themselves. And then we had one now that asks about the proportion. So confidence interval, roughly you will get three questions. And you might also get three questions on the hypothesis testing because it also has three, uh, where the population standard deviation is known, when it's unknown, and for the proportion. So now, this is for the mean because the hypothesis that they gave, they state uh, the mean in there. Remember, <clears throat> the sign in your alternative tells you whether you're doing a one-tail test or a two-tail test. It also tells you where your region of rejection will be. It also tells you how you will find your region, uh, your critical value, which also determine your region of rejection. Okay. So since this is a hypothesis testing, I'm not going to say the six steps because this question does not ask you to follow the six steps. So they give you the hypothesis, the null hypothesis and the alternative. And we can see that it's a two-tailed test because it's not equal in your alternative hypothesis. And they also give you the population standard deviation. So here the population standard deviation is known. They also give you your mean X bar, which is your sampled mean. And they give you your sample size and the alpha. And then they say, suppose that the test statistic was calculated and they found that that test statistic is 1.96. So it means they have calculated Z and they found that Z is 1.96. The question they're asking you is for the p-value. Now, two things you need to remember. When finding the p-value is the value inside the table. Remember the table contains the less than values. If we're doing a two-tailed test, it means we're having two areas of rejection. Therefore, it means our p-value, to find the p-value, we will have to multiply the value we find on the table by two. That's one. Number two, if the value of Z, if Z is positive, if Z is positive, we go into say one minus the value we find on the table. And once we have the value we find on the table, that value will replace the table value that we, we have inside there. Only for when Z is positive. If Z is negative, it's fine. The value you see on the table is the table value, and then we, we 
we subtract. Uh, what do you call that thing? Then we multiply by two because of two tail area. So now, how do we find the p-value? We go find the value on the table, which is 1.96. We know that 1.96, oh, sorry. We go to the positive side of the table, of the z table. We go find, 1.9 and then we go to the top to look for the 6. And the value we find on the table is 0 0.9750. Come here, we say 1 minus 0 0.9750. And it gives us the answer of one minus point nine seven five zero gives us zero point zero two five zero. So we're going back to number one and say two times zero point zero two five zero, and this will give us the p value of zero point the p-value of 0 0.05, which is option number B. Do you understand what I just did? Yes, I do. If I can repeat this, let me repeat it, but repeat it in a vice versa manner. Let's do this. And delete all these values. So they gave us our z is 1,96. Since z is positive, number one, when z is positive, when z is positive, we go into say one minus the value we find on the table especially when we're doing a two-tail test. And then step number two, to find the p-value, we're going to say two times our one minus the table value that we have. Put it this way, one minus, the table value that we have. So we know that Z is 1.96. We go to the Z table. We go find 1.96 there and we find our, our P value there, which is 0 0.9750. So we'll say 1 minus 0 0.9750, which then this gives us 0, 0,0250. We're going to say two times because that is one minus the value we find on the table, which is 0 0.0250. That is the value we found on the table. And this gives us 0, 0,05, which is option number B. And this is only for a two-tailed test. If it's a one-tailed test, the value you find on the table, it will be the value you see on the table, regardless of whether it's in the positive or the negative side of the table. Only This is only applicable when we have a two-tail. Because when we have a two-tailed test, we are interested in only those small areas there. And both combined areas of 1.96, they give us 0 0.250, 0 0.250, 0 0.520, but when we combine both of them, they give you the p-value. So this will be a 0 0.0250, and this site also will be 0 0.0250, 
but we need to combine them because the p-value is the one value. So we combine both of them and that is why we multiply by two. Okay. Uh, we have eight minutes. Let me see how many questions are here. We have one. Okay, since they are numbered, I know that one was eight, 10, 11, 12. So we have eight, nine, 10. Four questions that are remaining. So we'll do them tomorrow, the four questions. And uh, since this is hypothesis, we'll start with the hypothesis again. The next question is on hypothesis. And we can end here today. And then tomorrow we'll start with another question of the hypothesis. And then we move into the chi-square test and then we do the regression. Any question? Any comment? No, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. I will post today and tomorrow's videos tomorrow. Um, if you want to watch them, or maybe I can do it today. No, I'll do them tomorrow, both of them. Uh, thank you for coming through and thank you. enjoy the rest of your evening and see you in the afternoon tomorrow. From thank, you. Thank, you. thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank, thank you. you. All the help. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye.